this person, this um, family, this son, they went to his father, this son, and said, uh, Father, I don't want to go to church today. And the father said, you got to go to church, son. No, man, I should not go. No, I should not go today. I am feeling very rejected in church lately, and I feel that I should not go to church today. Son, you got to go to church. He said, uh, no, I'm not going to go today. And the father was getting upset and said, you got to go to church. It's important. We all going to church. And then said, no, I'm not going today. Like I said, I've been feeling rejected. He said, I had it. Go and talk to your mother. So he goes and talk to the mom. Say, mom, I don't want to go. He said, son, son, remember, you're the pastor. You got to go to church. <laughs> he was the pastor. <laughs> he was not. He was not trying to go to church. He was feeling a little bit rejected in church. Even the pastor felt rejected. I said today, as you can download this in iTunes and Pastor Tony, or go to YouTube and go to Pastor Tony, I said, let's take the power away from the enemy. I said, let's take the power away from rejection. Yes. Today I want to talk to you about something that is very important. <clears throat> Nowadays, one of the most toxic things they have filtered in Christianity is rejection. Rejection comes from the devil, my friends. That we have allowed the rejection that we suffered in the world, we have brought it with us. It's not the Israelites once they let go Egypt, some of them they carry with them into the promised land. They carry on with them some of the idols from the Egyptians. And as God was trying to, listen, purify them to possess the new land, to become somebody else, to take another authority, to be blessed. God said, you got to let go not only Egypt in the physical way, but you have to let go Egypt in any spiritual way, emotionally and not only physically. And then remember the story where they had to, you know, undig the whole thing and the idols and, and the stuff that I take and the story. And here's what I'm trying to say today. Most of us, we have been set free. We love Jesus. We say that Jesus is our God. But we have brought with us from the past life idols. And spiritual idols that we still carry with us in our hearts. And one of that is rejection. Rejection. You can never take the blessings from God if you allow rejection to be in your life. We can observe how Christians today allow rejection to form or pave their fusion. Don't let rejection determine what you do or who you are. Today a lot of people allow rejection to tell them who they are. You need to remember that it's not about what other people say about you. It's about what God and the Word of God says about you. You're going to give a hand up to God. Thank you now. Amen? Amen. You know what I have found? That today many Christians are surprised when they are rejected by those that they love. Especially when they are sharing the gospel. They cannot handle the rejection of their families. I remember when I went to talk to my family, I was so excited about the experience that God was doing. None of my family were Christians, so only my mother. So I went to my father's side, trying to tell him about what I want to do, serve God, love Him. And as I went over there, listen, and I started telling them what God was doing in my heart, they started laughing and they started embarrassing me in, in the meeting. And they start to make me feel very rejected. In that moment, listen, the enemy used that rejection for me, listen, to start kind of going back to the mentality of the world, and I start to reject them. Well, I went to talk to them. They don't want it. But it was kind of like an attitude that they reject me, I uh, somehow will reject them. You gotta remember that Jesus said himself, for my sake, they will reject you. So 
this should not be, look at me, a surprise. You should not be surprised that when you try to do something good for somebody, the enemy can cause them to reject you. So you can allow disappointment to come into your heart and you stop doing the good work. Even Jesus said in Matthew 10, 22, all men will hate you. Well, what? Hate you. This is new, I be, and I be. All men will hate you because of me. And all nations will hate you, hate you, because you are my followers. It's amazing how when you used to not serve God, look at me, everybody, young people, you used to do wrong and everybody celebrate you wrong. Now when you decide to do right, everybody rejects you and your family. Am I right? Yes. And somehow they even reject you. They do a part of something and they start to reject you. And that hurts. And we need to know how to deal with that. First of all, you should not be surprised. Well, many cars doesn't know don't who they are in Christ. They will continue to depend on what others say and what their opinions are towards them are. In other words, if you don't know who you are in Christ, you will continue, listen to me, you can come to church every week, but if you don't know who you are in God's eyes, you will continue depending on what others say about you. They say something nice, you're excited. They are celebrating you, you're excited. They say something negative, you go. Your family rejects you, and you go. He came to that which was his own, says the word of God, but his own did not receive him. You got to understand, he came to what it was his own. Apparently he failed. John 1, 11 says that he thought and came to hell and many left and wouldn't hear his message. It's like he's trying to talk to the people and half of the church, it's like right now, if I was trying to talk to many of you and half of the church would stand up and left. That's what they do to Jesus. They came to hear, the moment he started to share, they feel uncomfortable because he was telling the people, you cannot be with that woman without getting married. <laughs> he started to say, you cannot keep listen, you know, taking the money that doesn't belong to you. <laughs> you cannot listen, listen, you cannot keep lying and think you're going to inherit the kingdom of God. <laughs> and they walk away. They walk away and they reject, they say, we reject the decisions. That's what the word of God says in Matthew 6, 4, 5. A prophet is not without honor, except in his own town, among his relatives and his own home. Not do any, and I'm sorry, and he could not do any miracles, talking about Jesus, there. Where? With his family, where he born, where he was born, I'm sorry. Except lay his hands and a few sick people and healed them. He couldn't work not one Miracle, not many miracles. What? He went to his people. How many of you believe that if there was something in the heart of Jesus, it was to do good with his family? Amen. How many know what I'm talking about? All of us, we want the approval of our family. Am I right? Yes or no? Amen. But the truth is, the Son of God, we have lived without approval. And we lay, lay in that saying, well, they have rejected me. That is an excuse for me to be immature and act like an idiot every time somebody rejects me. Well, they reject me, I reject you. Is that what the world's mentality is? Yes. You treat me nice, I treat you nice. You reject me, I reject you. But when we're in Christ, we should not live like that. Because rejection comes from the devil. You hear me what I'm saying? So when we reject, we operate in the nature of the devil. Let me keep telling you what's going on. When Jesus went to his family, and his family rejected him, look at me, when your family rejects you, you have to act like Jesus. I was a baby Christian, and I didn't know how to react. They reject me, and right away I started to build a wall of rejection towards my family. 
But Jesus didn't do that. He tried to kill them. They say, you're the carpenter. You ain't nobody. We, we saw you. We saw you. Now you Jesus. And you know what happened? Look at me. He didn't curse him. He didn't walk out of there and say, you go to hell. You know what he did? He just moved to another city. Some of you, when they reject you, you get stuck in that place and you don't move on. Oh, come on, come on. God rebuild me that many of you, the moment you go to your family, they reject you and you get stuck in that city and you don't want to move no more. And you even years and days later, because they hurt you, you don't move on. And you get stuck in there. You don't move on for what is next. God has more for you, but you stop. No, they reject me. No, they reject me. You know what Jesus did? He moved to the next city. And you know what Jesus wants from you? When they reject you, listen, let it be. Move to another city. Move to another level. Move to another place where God wants to use you. Where God wants to do miracles. Come on. You better give glory to God right now. Let it be glory to God right now. He didn't get bitter. He didn't get bitter. Do how Jesus did. Many say that he who receives rejection, reject others. Have you heard that say? Yeah. I'm going to say it again. He who receives rejection, reject others. It is normal. It is natural. Yes, in the world. Look at me right now, people. I'm not entertaining. I know you like to be entertained. But today I need to teach you this. Because we are about to come into another semester. We are about to come into another season of our lives. And you know what we're going to face out there? A bunch of people that is rejected. The principle that operates in New York City is rejection people. And if we don't know how to act according to God, we're going to have a trouble. I came here 18 years ago. I have left my family. I have left my money. I have left my ministry when I was pastoring. I have left my good life to come and serve. First weekend, I go my boss, excited to do my very best to the people, to the kids, to the kids that I love, little kids. And the moment I become the first kid, I remember this little cute kid. I pick him up, and I, as I was saying, how oh, was so cute, so 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 beautiful. The kid started to kick, and then he went. Oh. And that day I was innocent. Eighteen years ago, I let go everything for this. And in that moment, the enemy wanted to trap my heart when they reject you. But you know what? I said, I'm going to let go of everything to come and let the enemy conquer me on the first day. You know what? I made my, my, my homework to love that kid like nobody else. And you know what? At the end of the semester, he ended up being one of the closest kids. And he was always close to me. He was always. But you know what? Because you know what? I was able now with years and with maturity God producing my heart to see beyond the rejection. You see, the kid was acting like that because he had no mother. Because his father was not there. He was hurt. He was just acting. He had an excuse to be like that. But I'm Christian. I will have an excuse to reject people when they reject me. Jesus came to give us a patience. And we oh, you better give a hand to God. We can't give us a patience. Even when we don't feel like it. To love, to accept those that they love us. But that is not divine in it. That's what the world does. The divine comes when you love and accept those that very hurt you. And you know why? We love to see Jesus doing exactly different. This world says, if they reject you, go ahead and reject them. Society deals with this on a daily basis. And the world believes this false concept. And how we should take rejection. And they even quote the, they quote the Bible for what they like. Eye for eye. We may quote the Bible for certain things. And forget when you deal with somebody that has issues of rejection and you tell them no. But when they tell you the first time, no. You say, but I want to do this and I want to do good. No. <sighs> yeah, but I want to. No. We don't know how to hear no. They tell us no. And we go, <laughs> The bad horse, it starts to come out of us. I'm going to know what I'm talking about. When they say, no. <laughs> what do you mean, no? What do you mean, no? <laughs> no. But, no. Let me train you, bro. No. You see, nothing happened. 
The same you when they tell you, no! <laughs> you need to learn to deal with rejection. Because this world out there is packed with rejection. And the enemy will do everything to harm your heart. Because the moment you are trapped by rejection, you're going to give all your authority to the enemy. I'm here saying, let's take bow the authority for the enemy. Let no rejection come to your heart. Let's come to rejection with love. Come on, you ain't going to hang up to that. You ain't going to hang up to that. You put it in Facebook. All right. I know, you're about to stone me right now. You can never say nothing about Oprah. I'm in the wrong place about saying mother Oprah. Well, Oprah is an idiot sometimes. Her statements are dumb. Oh, some of you already start to get the stones. You better not talk about Oprah like that, stone. I'm in the wrong church to talk about Oprah. Well, we like Oprah. Then Oprah, sometimes she's an idiot. Oprah said in public, every way goes to heaven, just to feel accepted. No, there's only one way, Jesus Christ. He's the only one dying on the cross, Oprah. <laughs> Some of you are not laughing, right? Oh, Oprah. Oh, get used to it. Look at what Oprah said. I, she said this in public, I don't want anyone who doesn't want me. You know what? It's coming the root of bitterness from the past, all the damage that she received. I don't want nobody who don't want me. You don't want me? That's what I'm saying. That's fine out there. But here, Jesus said, love those that don't love you. Accept those that don't want to accept you. Show Christ's life. But I'm about to tell you why we can overcome rejection. A British writer, the British think they have all the truth. Look at what this knucklehead lady, Janet, I'm sorry, she said this, I am good at walking away. Rejection teaches you how to reject others. I'm becoming good rejecting others. Yeah, some of you are becoming experts. You gotta change. You have such a great destiny. You have greatness in you. I have seen that. In you. As long as you allow rejection to control you. I have seen some of you having a great day. It's all good. It's perfect. You are like, <laughs> and then something happened. And you go from, <laughs> what happened? Oh, man. What's going on with you? Who talked to you? You were celebrating a few minutes ago. Leave me alone. What happened? Nothing. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why do you think you're laughing? Because I got you who you are. I just described you. The enemy, and I'm going to tell you next week more about it. This is a lie. Yeah. It shouldn't be that way. I become an expert rejecting others. Huh? Reject me? Reject me? I'm a good one. And, and oh, you reject me? I pass next to you and... <laughs> they even plan how to reject others. How many know what I'm talking about? I'm going to go there and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do... It all comes from some pain that you will not deal with it in the past. We're supposed to be free in Jesus Christ. 
who's supposed to conquer everything from the past. Do you want to walk into the promised land? Do you want the blessings that he offers? You have to let go of rejection. That's why the generation that was a slave, they will never walk into the promised land because they always see themselves as a slave people. He said, I am your father, the great I am. And instead of taking refuge in the king of kings, they see themselves as a what? As a slaves. God said, I cannot take slaves into the next land, into the next blessing. I can't. You gotta let go of that attitude. They treat me like a slave. You are a daughter, you are a son. Hagar was given the opportunity to be daughter when it was given to Abraham. But she never let go of her spirit of slave. Her rejection was stronger than the acceptance of Abraham. But in Christ, Jesus Christ's acceptance is greater than any rejection from the past. And we can move forward. Let's not move forward. Come on, you want to give a hand to God. Don't just interrupt him. Praise him. Amen. We should not be like that. I am good walking away. Ha, I know how to be how to reject others. No. We should not be like that in Christ. That's not an excuse for us when they reject us to act in maturity. Jesus shows, shows us something completely different. Even those who reject him, he didn't reject them. Instead, he received them and even gave them life. Some of them spoke bad about them, but instead of destroying them, he gave them mercy. He was at the cross saying, God, forgive them. Jesus did not base his success or who he was according to the rejection of others. Why? Why? Because he knew who he was for the Father. Do you want to handle well rejection? You got to know who you are for the Father. Imagine, imagine this for a moment. Look at me. Jesus took all your rejection so you can handle rejection well. What do you mean? Jesus was rejected in the synagogues. If I'm saying it wrong. He was rejected as a teacher. They reject him even after he helped people. Multitudes at the end walk away from him. The same people that shout, Hosanna! A week later they were saying, crucify him! Imagine the rejection. Imagine the rejection. People say, well you know why you good? You're an amazing person. You're doing great. And they say, what are they saying? Speak of the words about you. Kill the person. We are, we hate you. He will let go down to influence him. And he complete his task going to the cross. If there was somebody that had the right, listen, to have a little root of bitterness was Jesus. And it comes to the next level. What are you talking about, Pastor Tony? Well, some of you said, everybody can reject me. As long as my best friend don't. I can handle any rejection as long as my best friend doesn't reject me. Well, I got news for you. Get ready. Your best friend is about to reject you. You put your trust in your best friend, it's about to be messed up that friendship. Curse you will be. You said, why? Why, why I can overcome that? Because you said overcome that. Remember what he told Peter? 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 All of you guys are going to reject me in a few days. And Peter said, Psh, this bunch of losers will reject you, but not me. Yeah, before the rooster sang. Before the rooster cross, you will disown me three times. And what happened? <laughs> What happened? What happened? Do you like my Mexican thing that I got going on? Watch, watch this. <laughs> and then Peter says, I know this man! And he starts cursing. He starts rejecting him. 
And then Jesus turned back. And it says that Peter cried. Listen, listen, listen. Very bad. Then the most amazing thing happened. Are you ready? Oh, you're not ready. I'm not gonna tell you. That's it. That's it. Are you ready? Yes. I'm about to tell you something that'll blow your mind. Are you ready? Yes. Jesus is at the cross. Forgiving the ones and giving them an acceptance to the ones that reject him. Look at me. And then right there, almost at the end, says, Father, why have you, another translation, reject me? Why have you abandoned me? Here's the secret of the teaching. Jesus took all rejection in the cross. So you and I, by the Spirit of God, the resurrection from the dead, we can overcome rejection. He even was rejected by the Father. You better, this, you better understand what I just told you right now. The Father turned his face in one moment and said, I cannot look at you, son, because you have all the sin, all the rejection, all the bad things. I know I got this in myself. It's about the camera. I got this in myself. I just saw the guy like, whoa. Imagine me, I was like, whoa. <laughs> going back to the things this. Watch this. He received the rejection of his father. He took your rejection. He took the rejection when your father was rejecting you. He took in that cross the rejection of your own mother. He took the rejection, listen to me, of your friends in the school just because you believe in it. He took the rejection of your family because the moment you choose to believe in God, they say, we don't want nothing to do with you. Listen, listen to me. He took the rejection because you don't have the body of other people. He took your rejection because you don't look cute like other people. Pay attention. He took the rejection because you don't have the looks or the sight or the success of other people. He took the rejection right there. So you don't allow rejection no more to conquer your heart. If you want to give a hand, go ahead and do this part. Listen, praise him. Give him a yes, but listen to what I'm saying. He resurrects. And I'm going to show you how great is my Jesus. That's what I love him. He resurrected. He conquered that. And I imagine, I cannot show you this biblically, but I can believe by knowing Jesus. I can believe that as he resurrected, his father said, said, Jesus, my son, everything is done. Come to me, my son. Please, come to me, my son. But I know the heart of Jesus. I cannot prove you. But I believe that one of the reasons why Jesus said, Father, I cannot go. I want that more than anything. But I got to go with my friend Peter. He feels rejected by him rejecting me. And I have to break the shade of rejection of this world. The one that is rejected, rejects. And I need to go and accept Peter and tell him that I love him. And tell, give him the opportunity to talk. Him, so he can tell me that he loves me because he's going to need to accept many people that he's rejected. God, let me go first with my friend Peter. I believe God himself and Jesus went to Peter, not to the heavens, to go also with the disciples that they felt like losers. I know he wanted to go with the father. He says, I got to go with my friends because they reject me and I know they feel like nothing. And that's what we found. Look at me. That they appear to them. You don't believe that? I can prove you. I don't have the time. How? Because Thomas was not there. Like Thomas and I in the church right now pretty much. No. Yes. He's somewhere in the back. For Thomas. Now listen to me. It's just an insane joke. Now. The Bible says. That when Jesus came to the disciples. Thomas. Was not there, remember? Do you remember or not? He was not there. 
And then the Bible says that he came back another time just for Thomas. Thomas was negative. You know what Thomas was really feeling? Rejection. Hey, the Lord came and appeared, and you missed it. You know what he felt that moment? He just loved me. Why well, he didn't make me be here? So he confessed. I know Thomas is in there, guys. Don't worry. <laughs> so Thomas says, if I don't put my hand, you know, in the open, and if I don't touch, I would not believe. You know what he was doing? He felt rejected. Now he was what? I would not believe. He was rejected what? The reason he lived for. Rejection. He said, rejection? Look at me, please. I'm about to finish right now. Oh, that's nice. Please. Rejection has the power to make you do crazy things that you are not supposed. That's why a girl is willing to give her virginity to an idiot just to feel one moment accepted. That's why a young man is willing to do something stupid and become a criminal just to feel accepted with a deuce in the neighborhood. Bunch of losers. And he wants to feel accepted with the losers. Why? Because an issue that was not solved before. We have to solve this, my friends. Jesus appeared to Thomas and said, Touch. He came to give a sentence. And there is one thing we must do as Christians, my friends. And not to come to the church and say, So blessed. I can contain it. <laughs> so, oh, oh, bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. The new, the new, the new, the new. It's not about me. I'm Christ like so blessed. I'm Christ. You can jump all what you want. You can literally move, listen, your bed right here to this corner. But that doesn't make you question. You can carry issues all the way. Not because you sleep, my friend, in a garage makes you a car. <laughs> right? <laughs> Same way. Not because you literally sleep in church makes you a son that is healed by the acceptance of Christ. Let Jesus come and accept you. Let Jesus come and heal you. What happens when the people reject them? You want to love them? And what do you do? You want to hug him? <laughs> Follow me, people, with a camera. <laughs> yes or no? Yes. But the people that is healed can show their healing all the time. We've been set free by high price. By high price. He went to the cross. He went to receive rejection by his own father. So you don't deal with rejection. So next time you oper operate in rejection and you feel like, well, if you reject somebody, you operate in the nature of the enemy. So we must not allow rejection to be infiltrated in this church. And from this day on, I speak to you as pastor of this church. We must accept each other the way we are. And we must accept every person that comes from both or whether we minister in the side or Accepted. Amen? Amen? That's it. But they don't, that's it. Accept them. Be like Christ. Because there is something that this world needs. And I learned the first day. There is something that these kids need that we minister every week. And the people is acceptance. And then somebody says, I accept you the way you are, like Christ accept me the way I am. 
You know that this church is not wasting time in the way you look, the way you dress, the way you put your hair. By the way, once in a while, ladies, take a shower and brush your hair. That's the inside yo. But it's not about that. In the mid. <laughs> You can smell the whole thing. You also brush your feet once in a while. <laughs> he reject me now. See, that's the test. Tell me whatever you want. Treat me the way you want. I will feel for an instant maybe the attack of the enemy and rejection. But in one moment, I overcome. I will overcome the rejection and I will go and face any situation this time. So they don't have it. I will go. I will not let the enemy take advantage into my heart. Don't let the enemy. Amen? Amen. Praise God for those that love you. Love them. Praise God for those that care for you. Love them. But you know what? Be excited if somebody's rejecting you. It's my next challenge. Let's see who wins. The rejecter or the Christian. I'm going to bring it to submission to the Lord, that person. <laughs> How do you bring him, Pastor? Love. How do you bring him? With acceptance. How do you pray them? The way Jesus prayed. Hate and judgment. He just loved me. And you know what? I came to say this. Let's take the power from the enemy. How? Let's love each other. We have to break the clicks, my friends. I don't stay, but we listen to me. We have to break the clicks. There are some of you that come, feel comfortable with these people, and you chill and hang out with these people. People come from the outside and they perceive the clicks. There is no clicks in here. There is no. <laughs> this is not a black church. This is not a Hispanic church. This is not a white church. It's far away from me, Puerto Rican church. <laughs> This is the kingdom of God. This is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Amen? Who should we love? The pastor says, everybody. Who should we accept? Everybody. The crazy dude that comes to smell like, that's exactly, that's the one. If they not coming, then we're not doing nothing right. We just play in religiosity. Please, church. We want to go to the next city, to the next level. We have to not allow the pain that those that are around us, that we care, that cause us, break us. Jesus, move to the next city. I speak to you. Let's move to the next city. Amen? Amen. Let's move to the next level. Let's move to the next level. Did you believe it? Did you receive it? Human said, the one who is rejected, rejects. That's what the human said. Oh, today you were fast. I love it, man. <laughs> There's only one, one service. I told them you guys are great. Last service I said, you guys take forever. I'm mad. No, I'm not even expecting a phone thing. I love it, brother. I love it. Keep praying for him. How many of you guys see him in the How many of you guys see in the healing and the restoration? Hallelujah. But look at the word says. The one who is rejected, rejects. But in Christ, the one who is rejected, I say this. The one who is rejected can take it. In Christ, the one who is rejected can take it and make a decision to love the one that has been rejected. Amen? Amen. 
In other words, somebody reject me, I can take it. And I'm going to love that person in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. We have to, my friends. But look at me, look at me. In a few days, thousands of children, they're going to walk through these doors, in your sights, and everything that we do. And they are going to reject you. But not be fooled by the rejection of the people. They've been hurt. And if you just love them a little bit, they would accept your love. When I came to New York City, being nice was not good. I remember I came and I was nice to the people. And it was costing me trouble. And I came 18 years ago and I said to people, hey, what's up, man? And they go, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, I'm just being nice. They reject me because I was different. And the temptation was to become like them. But I said to myself, I came to change lives, not to let them change me. I'm going to be different from that day that I choose. And I said, I'm going to walk. And you know what? Little by little, the people that have these big walls of rejection, guess what? They saw that I was real. And as I said, I love you. They know that I was not just saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. They know that I will meet it, that I was there for them, that I will be helping them. Guess what? They put the walls down. And even the mafia have this plan. Accepted my love. Do you understand? Love them. This is what I do. With that are feeling rejected. Would you come? Come in. Just come all the way. Have you noticed that sometimes when you want to hug somebody, try to reject me, how they, you know, just as I give you a hug. Will you notice that? It's like, yo, yo, what's up? I haven't touched my wife. What's up, what's up? Are you with me? Well, my culture says no hugging. We don't have in my culture. One of them ripped the big princess in the Bible that you should not kiss and hug the people. To your brothers and sisters. You know what I do? I little by little start to get close. You feel more comfortable now. And I start to get more comfortable. And they feel comfortable. Amen? Love them. Thank you. You know what they want? Love that his father never gave him. The one that loved in you that the mother that never took the time. She was busy working so hard. Because the father wasn't responsible. Or because the father never received love. And now he doesn't know how to operate in love. Just love them. Let me ask you a question. Have you received love for Jesus? 